Hey everybody, welcome into this Premiere Pro video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. And today I want to talk about just kind of how I work with my audio in Premiere Pro, clean it up, maybe get rid of some background noise if it's there, and just some compressors and some mastering and things like that I do to really clean my audio up. So whether or not I'm using a more expensive Rode microphone or I'm using like Rode's Smart Lav Plus, which is a very affordable, it's like 80 bucks uh, for a great lavalier microphone you can plug right into your iPhone and record, or you can take it with the little $15 adapter and plug it into something like a Zoom H1, or with an XLR adapter, you can plug it into something like a Zoom H5. Rode's not sponsoring this video, by the way. Um, but even if you have like an amazingly super clean feed off of a high quality recorder like Zoom's H5, or like a, a broadcast microphone like my Procaster here, this is how I work with my audio in Premiere, and it is what it is. I think it'll help your audio if you don't do much in the way of audio processing. Whether you have a cheaper microphone or a more expensive microphone, it works for any kind of audio, and it will make your audio sound better. So here's what we're going to do. Um, here on my screen, I've got a copy of, uh, of a tutorial that's actually coming out. It's scheduled to come out the day after this Premiere uh, tutorial drops. And uh, I just have a little clip from it, and I've got some audio. And you can see here that uh, I, as I scroll through my audio feed, the first thing you'll notice, and it's a very important part of editing audio, Audio in Premiere, you have this little dB uh, monitor or meter, if you will. Most of the time, I want my dB level to be about negative three, which is all the way up here between negative six and zero. That means my audio is very loud, but it's not peaking. And again, the importance of this meter is you want to make sure that, like, if you're creating a video that's going to go up on YouTube, let's say, you want to make sure that your audio is not going to be way louder or way quieter than everyone else's videos. Do you ever think about why is it that, like, on TV, when you go from one TV program to another, the volume is typically about the same, except sometimes those stupid advertisements that really crank the volume up. But that's beside the point. It's because you're able to tell how loud you are based upon this meter, and if everybody's using the same meter, we all kind of have the same volume, so you don't have to worry about cranking your you know, uh, computer speakers up and down all the time. So we want to make our audio right around the negative three spot, and right now if I play this audio, and we want to blur this straight up, I mean you can see I'm barely getting past negative 18. So the first thing I like to do with my audio is right click and choose audio gain. Um, now my, my peak amplitude is negative 10.8, so in this clip, um, the the, the the loudest my my uh, audio is getting is this 10.8 dB. I want to just I'm going to go and normalize all peaks to negative three and see what that does. Watch the audio down here. Hey, look at that! It got a lot louder. Let's check it out. Down, yeah, like an angle of 90 is perfect. So and I'm hanging out here, you know, right about negative 10 probably dB. It still needs to get a little louder, but we'll work on it. Um, so the first the first thing I want to talk about is this denoiser. So over here in the effects panel, which by the way you can go Window Effects to bring this up, uh, we've got some audio effects. Adobe Premiere has this denoiser effect. You can click and drag and drop it on your audio clip and uh, just twirl open the individual parameters, twirl open reduction, and just like crank reduction way down. This does a remarkable job in most situations getting rid of a lot of different background noises. It has some trouble with some low hums, but it all depends on your voice. If I have a hum that matches the cadence, or not really the cadence, but the frequency of my voice, Denoiser is going to have some difficulty getting rid of it, but it does a really good job almost all the time. The Denoiser uh, effect, don't sleep on it. I'm going to leave it there because it's going to be part of the preset we create in the end of this. Um, and of course, if you don't want it for a particular audio clip, you just shut it off or you can select it and delete it. I'm going to leave it on here. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to apply a compressor. So the way a compressor works, if I double click on this audio uh, clip so we can take a closer look, we've got all of our peaks and valleys here. A compressor basically is going to take a point which we choose. Like if we say, all right, everything at like this point right here, we want you to compress it down and then we'll be able to kind of bulk up up the volume of the entire clip so you sort of take the peaks and squash them in a little bit and sort of make the inner not so loud parts a little bit louder and it helps perform this kind of beautiful leveling effect to your audio it helps give you more of like a radio voice but you want to be careful when you're using it because a lot of people have a tendency to go a little overboard when they use their compressors um, and it can be not quite the best uh, it just sounds pretty fake I'll put it to you that way uh, so we want to be careful when we're applying our compressor so here's the how I'm gonna apply this compressor I'm gonna go back to my effect controls here we're gonna use dynamics I actually typically use multiband compressor but it's a little bit more complex than dynamics so we'll just roll with dynamics for this tutorial click and drag it out to your clip and then up here in the effects uh, effect controls go ahead and choose edit 
Uh, there are a bunch of different presets. I'm going to leave it at soft compression. We're going to ignore this auto gate and soft clip stuff. Although I, I should mention, depending on the level of your compression, if you're doing a very light compression, um, auto gate and even the soft clip option, if you play around there, you can do some amazing things as far as dropping out background noise as well. Just as an FYI, it's not technically the way it's supposed to be done, but if, if you're in a, if you're between a rock and a hard place. That's what I'm trying to say. That sometimes can help you out. We're also going to ignore the expander. It's all about the compressor today. Uh, I'm going to boost this up here. I'm going to just listen to the audio. Create a simple drop shadow uh, by just coming. So not much of anything going on. We're going to set the threshold pretty low. So basically, we're going to be telling Premiere, look, anything uh, that crosses this negative 30 dB threshold, we want you to apply compression to. And we're going to set the ratio to like 4.5. You don't want to go much higher than like 4 or 5. That's when it really starts to sound fake. Um, and basically, this is a 4.5 to 1 ratio. So for every, uh, what is it, 4.5 dBs uh, past negative 30 dB, it's going to compress it 1 dB like time over time per like four and a half uh, that it gets past. So it's it's a little complex to wrap your mind around it, but don't think too hard on it. Play around with it and see what sounds good to you. Uh, attack and release, that has to do with how the, um, uh, the, the dynamics, the compressor comes in and out of your audio. We're going to leave it just at the one millisecond and 100.0 millisecond for attack and release. Now makeup, this is sort of like the, the volume that you're raising out of the middle of your audio. I'm going to try setting this to 12 dB. I have a feeling we're going to have to change it, but let's just take a listen here and see what we got. A little bit more cyan and a little bit more yellow into the right, highlights. So you can hear the audio. So midtones, some cyan, some magenta, let's, and a little bit Let's just shut the dynamics off real quick uh, by hitting this. That looks pretty good. Now, we want to create a drop shadow for right. this. So we can create a simple drop shadow. So there it is without the dynamics compressor. Uh, by just command or control. Now we're going to turn it on. on. This is the way I like to do it at least. I don't like to use just a straight. Can you hear that? So what we did is it just it just kind of like gives some fullness to the sound. But again, you want to be careful. If we crank the ratio, for instance, like way up, let's put the ratio at like, I don't know, 7 or 8, and maybe even drop the threshold some more. If we can take it a little lower, let's take it down to like 40 or so. And a little bit of blue. Uh, and that looks you hear that? It just now, sounds really bad. We need to crank the so makeup up. A simple drop shadow, uh, by just but it just starts to sound really bad, and you're really pulling so much background noise out of your audio. It just sounds bad. I don't know how else to put it. It sounds bad. Uh, so let's uh, let's set the makeup back to 12. That actually sounds pretty good. So we're going to leave that as our compressor. Turn that back on. Under control clicking on this. This is the way I like to do it okay. at least. It might actually still be even a little bit too strong, but I'm not going to fuss over it too much. Next, I like to drag out some mastering. So I'm going to drag out mastering, audio effects, or audio effect, excuse me. Drop it on that uh, audio clip. I've got my mastering. I'm going to choose edit. Uh, I like to go with the subtle clarity. However, subtle clarity, uh, it's going to give you some reverb. And, you know, if you don't want reverb, you don't want reverb, uh, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, I'm going to turn on low shelf enable and also high shelf enable. we got three little points we can drag around. And let's just give this a list and see what we got going on here. I don't like to use just a straight drop shadow with Not layer bad. styles because the drop shadow needs to be this down. Um, so big. I'm gonna pull In this, this case, up. I tend to like to pull uh, the high shelf up a little bit. It gives the, especially at least my voice, it gives like the, the top end of my voice like this really sharp snappiness that I really like. It, we're going to begin to see it kind of on the sides of our text effect. So what I'm going to do is I'll, just I'll boost. I'll boost what I got going on in there. So that, that's that's pretty good. You know, again, you just play with this. You got to listen to it. Listen to see what sounds good to you. Load the Doom right, there's with mastering. as a selection. Command or control and there's click without on the, the new mastering. icon uh, that's going to place a layer. So it's making a bit of a difference. And then one of the last things that I'll typically go in and do is just add some either bass or treble, depending on the clip. In this case, I'm going to add some treble. I'll add like 7 dB of treble. See what this sounds like. <laughs> Black. We could do like a very, very deep red. Maybe we'll that do sounds a very pretty deep good. red. Um, Something like now that. Now, one of the things I'm looking at here is Option I'm just I'm watching my dB a meter over here, and it looks like it is pretty much PC command. You know, it's bouncing between that negative six, negative five, all the way down. You know, maybe occasionally getting very close to the zero. So that's really good. We brought our volume way up. In fact, if we listen here, get rid of all of that in just a moment. I'll show you how right. to do that. And then we go back over here to like a clip that we haven't done any audio work on and we just play it on here it's set to the blend mode multiply I mean can you hear the difference it's pretty crazy so once you've got your audio kind of sorted out and you know sort of the effects and presets that you want to apply the compression level the mastering things like that you're probably going to save it as a preset so you can apply it to any clip very easily in the future here's how you do that uh, what we need to do is just select the audio clip uh, which we've applied all these effects to go ahead and select one of the effects hold down the commander control key 
and select each of the others, then right click and choose Save Preset. Now, I want to save this as a scale for the type. I'm going to name this uh, audio. I like to I like to prefix my audio effects with audio and my video uh, presets with a visual just so it's very easy. They all divide themselves up in my presets folder automatically. Uh, audio, and we're going to call this Road Temp, and you can give it a description if you like. Hit OK. And this is now going to live up here in my presets folder. There it is, Audio Road Temp. Great thing about the preset is not just that it's a preset, but specifically we can do something like we got two clips here. We want to apply this preset to them both. We haven't adjusted the audio gain, so it's not going to be the exact same sound. This is just to show you uh, the power of presets. Not only, of course, can you just drag, whoop, there's an auto save. Not only can you just uh, drag a preset out and drop it right on any uh, audio clip you like, but you can select multiple audio clips by holding down your shift key, select, boom, both of those audio clips. And when I drag a preset out and drop it on one audio clip, any other audio clip that's selected will also get that preset. So if you have a timeline with a hundred audio clips or a hundred video clips and they all have audio tracks and you want to adjust all that audio in one fell swoop it's all chopped up just select all the clips drag a preset out drop it on one boom it's going to apply those effects corrections whatever you have to all of those clips that quick that easy. So that's how I edit my audio for my tutorials for anything that I'm really uh, recording for the most part run it into Premiere, some compressor, some uh, some mastering, get rid of background noise if it's there, and that's pretty much it. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Guys, please leave a like down below. If you like this video, share the video with your friends, and if you're new to the channel, make sure that you subscribe because there's uh, a new video editing tutorial, new Premiere uh, video editing tutorial, I should say, that comes out every Wednesday or Thursday, and uh, there's all kinds of other great content on the channel as well. So make sure you subscribe. So for editing video in Premiere Pro, and for compressors and mastering and, hey, what the heck, for the Zoom H5 recorder, which is an amazing recorder, by the way, um, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Daniel Dodson, TalkVid.com. Catch you in the next one.